Hi, welcome to PSLE Math Heuristics Lessons. All right, now today we are we are looking at uh, a very short problem, a simple problem, or a challenging problem. <laughs> All right, so depending on how you are able to solve it. If you can't solve it, it's a challenging problem. If you can solve it, then it becomes an easy problem. All right, now uh, in this lesson, I will just show you how to use the guess and check method. Uh, but but there are more things to know about this method. For example, uh, you will need to know. Uh, of course, you need to know how to use a method, uh, but you need to know when to use a method and uh, what to look out for in a question, right? In the problem, uh, can I use guess and check method for all questions? Well, you have to look out for certain certain features in the problem. So we will be talking about all those things, right? So, uh, but in this lesson, what do we do? We talk about how to use the method, right? Uh, so how do we use this method? Now, let's read the question and then uh, and then we see how we use the method. So if you want to find out more about when to use the method and uh, and then what what to look out for in the problem, uh, then you may want to give us a call and then we will be glad to help you right, in our lessons, right, in our tut tutoring lessons. Okay, so let's look at a uh, challenging problem. Let's look at this problem and uh, let's see how do we uh, use the guess and check method. A group of 87 children participated in an arts competition. Each boy was given 10 crayons, each girl was given 15 crayons. The boys had 95 more crayons than the girls. So how many girls were there? Alright, now to use the method, uh, it is very uh, easy. Uh, it, you just have to draw a table. So every time there is a guess and check method that you are going to use, uh, it is very important uh, that you always have a table to organize your numbers because if you don't have a table your steps are random okay your steps are all over the the paper and that's when you start to make mistakes already but in a table you can see the numbers are organized and it's easier to keep track of what you are doing so first row you cut the first row which is always the labeling uh, so what kind of labels do we have inside according to what the question says for example, uh, you have boys, right? There are boys in the question. So how many boys are there? And the boys are given some crayons. So we are going to put down crayons. So how many crayons were given to the boys? And then there are girls. So we are going to put down how many girls? And uh, then of course the girls receive some crayons. So how many crayons were given to the girls? And, and then uh, the next few columns are important. Right, whatever key numbers, right, the important numbers that you see, the total number of children, you will need to include in your labels. So, 87 children, okay, let me just put down like this. How you want to label is up to you. Uh, and then there is another one, which is the boys had 95 more. So, let's put down 95 more crayons, all right. And, uh, and if there is not enough columns, then you draw another one. The last column is your tick and cross. All right, so that is your guess and check table. Uh, first row is always the label. You will need to label your your, ta your table first. All right, uh, and then do, do not cut too many rows. Okay, don't even cut many columns at the beginning. Like you can see that, how did I cut the columns? I cut the columns as I label. Why? Because if you cut too many columns in advance, uh, you may have too many columns which is which are not used and then you have to erase so I cut according to what I need right as I cut I label then I cut I label so if I have finished all my labeling then I don't cut anymore same thing for the guessing right you don't have to cut many rows you cut the first row and if the row if the first row I mean if the guess is wrong you cut another row and then if it's wrong cut another row so you cut according to what you need okay now so how do we use the method uh, you always look at the total, right? The total number of children, and then you always divide by two. Always half the total because it's easier, all right? You always half the total number, uh, but there's a problem. 87 cannot divide by two, so you get the remainder, right? Uh, so what do we do? Well, uh, if you take 87, divide by two, you have four times two, eight, and then that will be three times two, and six, and remainder one, right? So. So which means that you can have 43 boys or 43 girls. So you can choose uh, whichever you, you like. So if I have 43 boys and then I will have how many girls? I will take the total which is 87 and then I minus 43. So you do your working. So 87 minus 43, I will get 44 girls. Okay, now this method is 
uh, more suitable for P3, right, or P2, right, but it's more for P3, right, because P3 are learning how to use this method, uh, and it's also very applicable for P6 students as well, if they forgot all the other methods they learn, like they forgot how to use assumption, uh, they forgot how to, how to, how to solve, how, or they don't know how to solve the problem, uh, then the last method they can think of is guess and check. Of course, it's very tedious because there'll be a lot of guessing, all right? That's why it is the last method to choose if they can't solve the problem. Uh, but for P3, they need to know how to draw, how to use a table, how to, how to guess and check at P3 level. Okay, so how many prions are given to the boys? So for the 3 times 10, that will be 430. And then how many girls? So for the 4 times 15. Okay, for the 4 times 15, that will be 660 crayons and by the way uh, 44 times 15 that is a p4 topic so uh, so at p3 level don't worry the numbers will be quite small but at p4 uh, they may have to do this they may have to multiply two digit numbers all right so uh, the boys had more than the girls and if you look carefully right if you see carefully you can see that uh, the boys has actually lesser than the girls so which means that uh, that is a wrong guess already right so so if it's lesser than the girls, then what do we do? Then we just, uh, we can just put, uh, okay, we can't put any number there, right? How you want to, how you want to fill in the box is up to you. But, uh, but the boys definitely don't have 95 more than the girls because you take 430 minus 660, uh, you can't get anything, right? All right, you get a negative number. So we just put a dash and it's a wrong guess. Okay, so which means that I have to what? I have to increase, right? Increase the boys, right? Increase the boys. So let's increase the boys, and uh, and you don't want to increase by, uh, by by too few. You want to increase by many boys because uh, because you can see that we are not even close to ninety five more. So we want to increase as uh, we want to have a big jump. So maybe let's have sixty boys, maybe, right? So and then eighty seven children minus 60, there'll be 27 girls, right? So you have a big jump. And then see whether are we getting nearer to 95 more. All right, so 60 boys, 60 times 10, 600. And then 27 times 15, you have 405 crayons given to the girls. So you take 600 and you minus 405 and you will get how many? 600 minus 405. Uh, the boys has 195 more, more than the girls. Uh, wrong guess, uh, but you can see that it's very far from 95. We overshot already. So when you overshot, what must you do? Stop increasing the boys. All right, it's very logical, right? When you overshot, you have to stop increasing the boys. You have to decrease the boys already. So which means that maybe, uh, let's decrease the boys to 50, maybe, all right? So if, if there are 50 boys, then how many girls are there? 87 minus 50, you will get 37 girls. So 50 times 10, 500 crayons. And then 37 girls will be 37 times 15, that will be, oh, 555, oh dear. So what happened? <laughs> so uh, again, you can see that uh, the boys are getting less, right? Less crayons than the than the girls. So, uh, so what happened? So we have, so we we decreased too much, too much already. All right, we have decreased too many boys. So maybe let's let's put in the middle. Okay, let's cut another row and let's put down fifty-five boys. And if there are fifty-five boys, then how many girls? Eighty-seven minus fifty-five you will get 32, right, 32 girls. So you can see that this method is actually not very ideal. It's not very, uh, it's not the best method to use. Uh, what happened if you don't get the answer in the fourth row, you have to think of the fifth row, you have to think of a fifth guess, or even the sixth guess, seven, and you may have quite a number of guesses, and it takes time. So this method is, uh, is not a very ideal method. Uh, so which means that there is actually a better method than this, which I will show you in the next uh, next video. All right, but nevertheless, let's continue. So you have 55 boys, that will be 550 crayons, 35 times 10 each. 32 girls will be 32 times 15 each, that will be 480. And then you take 550 and you minus 480, 
and the boys have 70 more than the girls, which is very close to, uh, very close to 95 more. So which means that, uh, what do we do? Uh, which means that we can continue to, we can increase the, we can increase what? Increase the boys a little bit, right? Okay, we can, we can increase the boys a little bit. So let's increase the, uh, or should we increase the boys? Let's increase the boys a little bit. Maybe how about 50, uh, how about 57, right? And then there are 87 children. So 57 minus 87, you will get 30 girls. So 57 times 10, 570 crayons. And uh, 30 times 15, that will be 450, right? 450 crayons. So 570 minus 450, you get 120. Oh, you overshot. So what happened? Overshot. So we increase, uh, we, we increase maybe a bit too much. So we have to come back already. So when you come back, what happened? You have to go back, right? Miss, stop increasing. So we have to now go back to 56, okay? So if there are 56 boys, then how many girls will there be? So there are 87 children minus 56. And you will get 31 girls. And 56 boys will be 36 times 10. 31 girls will be 31 times 15. That will be 465. And then 560 minus 465. Ah, you finally get 95 more crayons than the girls. So you have gotten the answer after how many guesses? After uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. After 6 guesses. Okay, so this is how we use the guess and check method. Uh, it is not really the ideal method, right? Uh, there are actually better ways of solving, uh, but we still need to know how to use guess and check, especially for P3, because at P3 level, uh, the students the mind, the minds are not yet, uh, not able to process uh, complex problems yet. So the primary three students will have to understand how to use this simple method, and then when they go to P four, then uh, then you will start to learn methods like assumption, uh, like uh, even three rows get the answer. Uh, so we will talk about that in the next few lesson. But basically, your guess and check method is the is the is one of the simplest method that you need to know, and it is also the last method to think about when you can't solve any problem, <laughs> right? Even for P six at P six level, uh, if you find that you can't solve any problem, you will have to come back to this method, <laughs> and then try to use this method to solve. Uh, but the disadvantage of this method is it takes time, right? Especially if you don't guess correctly, you don't guess. Uh, uh, you don't make clever guesses, uh, then what happened? You find that you are randomly hitting, right? Hitting numbers which are not correct. So, so to to do guess and check, you always have to do what? You have to take the total number and halve it, and then you increase, right? Increase the boys. If you find that you overshot, right? Then you must come back, right? That's how you adjust, right? If you overshot, you come back. If you are too far behind, then you you jump forward more, right? You jump forward a bit more. So that's how you adjust, right? Adjust your guess and check. All right. So, uh, so this our this is our method. All right. That uh, that is that, that you can see now. So, uh, so, so the next lesson we'll we'll, we'll be talking about other methods, right? So in our tutoring lessons, right? In our tutoring lessons, uh, there are quite a number of things that we can learn. Uh, so of course, uh, it's not just about how to use the method, but we also will look at when to use the method, what to look out for in the problem, because not all questions can use the same method. You have to look at certain features in the problem, right? There are some keywords, some clues in the problem uh, that allow you to use certain methods, right? So, so that's what we will learn in our tutoring lessons. All right, so see you in the next uh, heuristic lesson and, uh, and stay tuned because you'll be looking at other kinds of methods that we'll be using. All right, so see you in the next lesson.